I'm Cheryl Barr, and I'm an entrepreneur and mentor to women entrepreneurs who are struggling finding their ideal clients and make money. So I help them do both. And I have a very special guest today, incredible designer and creative person, Natasha Lacos. Hey, Natasha. Say hi. hi. Natasha is a dear friend, and she's also a creative director graphic designer, and a visual philosopher. And Natasha's work is fueled by her obsession with striking images and evocative details. I'm so proud to, to actually say that Natasha has designed my site, too. I want to share that and, and my new site that's coming up. Natasha believes that art exists for a single purpose, and that's to elevate the experience of being alive and that a perfectly crafted visual identity from the logo to the masthead to the website composition and complementary collateral is all a work of art. Natasha designs for an eclectic array of clients from fashion photographers, best-selling authors, to business coaches and wellness creatives, wellness crusaders. I guess you could say they're creatives. She runs a virtual Atelier, where she crafts couture identities for exceptional clients, helping them make an unforgettable impression both online and off. Natasha believes impeccable work is love made visible. Beauty appeals to our highest spiritual qualities, and mastery should always include a hint of mystery. So I'm thrilled to have you, Natasha, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and so today I wanted to have you talk about your whole design aesthetic. So can you talk to us, especially for people who are new online, they're just getting their business up. So we talk about some of the of the important things, like what is a brand? And what is a yeah. visual identity? I mean, branding is a word that gets tossed around a lot. I'd like to kind of talk about branding and visual identity is two separate things. Branding itself, the concept, um, has evolved a lot over the past few years, several years. And I heard something recently, I think it was on Forbes, that really sounded like kind of the most up-to-date modern definition of branding. And that was that branding is really what your prospect thinks of when he or she hears your brand name. So it's everything, if you think about popular brands, it's everything the public thinks it knows about your name brand offering. So that, those are both factual things and emotional things. So I think the example Forbes used was Tiffany. You know, So factual, we think about it comes in a robin's egg blue box. And emotional would be it's romantic. You know, So your name, your brand name exists objectively. People can see it. It's something that's fixed. But your brand exists only in someone's mind. Mm -hmm. So that's really how, I mean, I think that's so true about branding, right? There's those two elements to it. And then when we think about visual identity, that is really a graphic system of logos and typography and illustration and photography that identifies a brand or an organization or you if you're an online entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And so this includes, you know, your website, your social media platforms, your business cards, your brochures, your media kit, the branding of the materials that you would use at a workshop or a live event. It's really anything visual that people come into contact with. As you were mentioning the different brands and the experience, you know, it's the experience that we almost are buying many times. And yeah. When you think about Virgin airlines and you know the whole experience of that brand that yeah exactly it's yeah. something that people can connect to so how does someone stand out in a crowded marketplace i mean this seems to be the million dollar question <laughs> yeah. and the short answer it's not an easy answer but the short answer is by being themselves right you stand out by being yourself but by, by translating who you are and what your unique gift is because the truth is there's no one else on the planet like you or like me or like the person who's watching this. There may be people who offer the same service or the same product, but no one can offer it like you can. No one has your unique viewpoint or creative expression. So the only way to stand out is to harness that and to express it. 
So, I mean, I say it, it sounds simple, and in a way it is simple, but it's scary. And I think that's why people are, you know, confused about how do we stand out and there's so much competition. And it's like there is so much competition and at the same time there's no competition, right? Because no one's truly competing with you. The aspect that makes it difficult is that it's scary. But the people who everyone admires, you know, the people who clients will come to me saying, oh, I love this person or I love this person, they're the people who I think have really been courageous enough to do that to kind of like put their stake in the ground and say what they stand for and express that. Like the more specific you can be and the more you can really stand for what your unique viewpoint truly is, the more magnetic your brand will be. Mm -hmm. And the more those people will find you. I love Seth Godin always writes about worldview and that's what it is. What is your worldview? Right. And those people with that worldview can find you. It's exactly. like a little beacon that you're saying. Yes. I believe in this. This is who I am. Yeah, and like they'll the come and find you. Yeah, the lighthouse. You know, as new entrepreneurs, it's there's a lot to do in the beginning, and so yes. there's not a lot of cash usually because you're trying to make it, um, you know, make it work. So mm -hmm. for someone who's new and they're just starting online, and maybe they can't even afford to do or hire someone to do a website. What are some of the things, you know, how can they create a magnetic brand with what they have? Any, any tips? I mean, this might be interesting coming from a designer, but I would actually say in the beginning, if you can't afford to hire a designer or work with a web designer, I would say invest in photography and copywriting, actually above design. And I don't mean invest as in hire someone. I mean, pay attention to these things, to these elements, spend time on these. So get great photos. If you can't hire a photographer, I would just say, you know, use natural light. Have photos on your website of you looking into the camera, looking at the audience, at the viewer, making that connection. I feel like when you're trying to do the most with the least, it's really important to do that. Um, you know, I see a lot of people using these kind of abstract, vague, they might be very artistic and beautiful images, but they're just not very strong in making that connection with the viewer. Mm -hmm. So I would say the second thing is to have a killer bio, a killer about page. So the about page is the second most viewed page on your site. Um, so you really want to take this opportunity to explain who you are and why you're passionate about what you're doing. You know, the, the book Start With Why, I think it is. Yes. You know, talk about that, how you can help people. Um, I think it's really important to invest your time and effort in that area. And then for the design, I would just say, you know, keep it simple and sophisticated. You know, don't try and do too much. Don't let the design distract or detract from your message. Let it take a back seat to photography and copy. Let it support your message and your work. You know, you can, beautiful design can be accomplished with a black and white palette or with one typeface. You know, so it's not about so much about the design elements and being, you know, snazzy with the visuals in the beginning. I think making sure that your message is clear and that that comes across and that people get a real picture for who you are is most important. Yeah, and I do agree with you. The photos are so important so that you look warm and approachable, whatever that yeah. is to you, because that's, you know, you know, we don't know you, so we want to know, like, and trust you. Yes. So the more your photos can portray that, the, the better. Yeah. What are the building blocks of this online visual identity? Well, I mean, to sum it up, I mean, the nitty gritties of it are the design elements, which are things like your color scheme, your type family, the graphic treatment of your site. So is it bold? Is it soft? Is it modern? Is it retro? And then photography and copy, which we've already touched on. But I would say before all that comes, you know, knowing your why, knowing what you're passionate about, because then you can let that shine through with the copy and the photography and the design elements. And another thing I think that's really important for your identity is, you know, what is your role? So when you think about what you do in whatever field you're in, and this will really help separate you, you know, what is your role? Are you a change agent? Are you a provocateur? Are you a teacher? Are you a sage? Are you an artist? I really think that determining that specific angle and what you stand for, your viewpoint, once you have that, all the other stuff, the design elements, the color, the type family, they kind of all fall into place because they're kind of all looking up towards that, kind of like the top of the triangle, you know? They're looking up to that, and that kind of answers all the questions for you or for a designer. Mm -hmm. The building blocks can be the design elements, but I think they all take their 
cue from your viewpoint. So I would say that's kind of the most important thing. And then later, later you'll find that design decisions, um, you can make them so much easier, you know, and you won't be kind of going in those circles, like not, not quite being able to put your finger on what's not right about the design. Yeah, and I think this is what you're talking about today. I just can remember struggling with this the most, you know, like, who am I? What do I stand for? When I was brand new, and even mm -hmm. now it's shifted, and I really want to be clear about what really feels authentic to me, because I think it's layers. I just remember in the beginning I was afraid to be online, you know, when mm -hmm. I first went out there, because I'm a person behind the scenes, backseat PR person. Right. That's where I came from. I always was pushing people like you in the forefront. So I think, and I see a lot of that where, where everyone's really nervous about stand, you know, showing up fully, mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. online. So I think it's a it's a process. But the faster you answer these questions, Natasha's talking about, um, when you're ready to create the website, the better we will understand who it is and what you do. Yeah, and you touched on something really important, I think, is like knowing that it will change, yeah. you know, that it, it completely makes sense. So don't get so stuck up on it and start future tripping about, you know, just embrace where you are now. Think about where you're going and work from there and know that it will change. It's inevitable. Totally. This is my fourth website I've had, I think, in, mm -hmm. since I've become a coach, you know, so it's... And I had websites before that for my other business. So it, it will change and evolve yeah. as you evolve. Yeah. So you have an amazing clientele. You know, you've, you are working with um, a lot of authors, a lot of speakers, and these are on the national circuit. And uh, some of them are Oprah's um, thought leaders of the next generation. So mm -hmm. they might have... Well, I know they do. They have different websites, different platforms is what we call it. The, the word platform is really your online presence. So mm -hmm. tell us, you know, when you've got social media and you've got like Tumblr and Pinterest and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and what else? There's probably more. That's a lot of platforms. So yeah. how do you bring all of these aspects together for one cohesive brand? You know, brand identity. Yeah. Well, you really want to keep the look and feel of your brand consistent. So that means, um, you know, with your colors and your typefaces and your graphic treatments, keep them looking the same all across the board. So let's just say, for example, your color scheme is blue and green and you are using Times New Roman as a typeface and lots of white space. You want to incorporate all those elements in every platform you're on. You really want it to look like the same hand has touched everything. Oh, great. That's a great so, way to say it. Yeah, you really want to put your stamp on it. So most platforms, um, you can manipulate enough to do that, you know, mm -hmm. if you're looking at things like YouTube and Twitter, and I was just customizing a Tumblr feed for a client the other day. It's like you, you really have to kind of get in there and see what you can and cannot change, mm -hmm. you know, what will allow you to upload custom graphics and things like that, just so that your stamp is, is everywhere. It's on everything, and it stays consistent across the board. You know, you never know where someone is finding you, you know, what portal they're coming through. So you might think, well, yeah, my website looks like this, but this over here can look like that. But I would say you really want to keep a thread that runs through all of them that remains consistent. So can you tell us what's coming up? I know you're yeah. working on some, some special things for um, people who want more information to figure out how to, how can they do it with, you know, take some of these concepts that you've talked about and do it for themselves. So tell us what's coming up. Well, as you know, um, my business has grown to the point where I can't work with as many people as I would love to. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm creating a step-by-step -step guide, kind of a fill-in-the-blanks playbook that will serve as a tool that you can use to take yourself through the identity process as if you're working with me side-by-side, -side, kind of in a one-on-one -on -one, um, situation that I do with my clients. So this is something that you'll be able to use whether you're building a website on your own or you're thinking about hiring a designer or you're um, already working with one. Um, it really breaks my heart when I see entrepreneurs who have so much to give struggling to express themselves online. I can go through kind of what that will include because I think that might be helpful yeah, to people. Yeah, share, share a little bit more about it and then we'll tell them how they can uh, get on your list to be one of the first to know when it's coming out this spring. Great. 
Yeah. I mean, I think what I hear from a lot of people is that whether they're, you know, someone new to starting out or they're someone who's had some success and is looking to rebrand themselves, Mm -hmm. they don't know where to start. So a lot of that is just kind of um, stepping out of that overwhelm and confusion and figuring that out. I can help with that for sure. And then it's the, you know, the building blocks, the process of crafting your visual identity, um, how to infuse your personality into your website how to create a focused visual look, that consistency that we were talking about yeah. across all your platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, DIY design tips, things like how to pick your typefaces, your fonts, how to pick a color scheme. Um, I really want to go into logo design and talk about you know, how to determine if you actually need a logo. Um, really how to get clarity so that you can take action and move forward. I see so many people who are just really stuck and not knowing which way to go. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that I think has to do with, you know, perfectionism that we get caught up in about launching a website. Um, you know, so how to trust yourself and your ideas and really move forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I, and I see a lot of stuckness around what is my niche? I don't have a website or I need to get my website up. All of this, it's fear. It's fear. Right. But procrastination, overwhelm. Um, perfectionism, all the things you mentioned are part, that's kind of a flavor of fear, but it's really great that you're going to do this so that people will be able to take these ideas and these concepts for this beautiful identity, and that's the name of the project is Identity. Yeah, the name of it is Identity. So if you're interested in uh, getting on her list Natasha Lacos, it's N-A-T-A S H A and Lacos L A K O S dot com, and you can get on her list and be one of the first to know when it's available. And I just am so thrilled to have you here today because you really are like an artist working with people to have this incredible online identity. And you know, I know I count myself as one of the lucky ones that. It's to, to work with you, and I just I so appreciate it. But thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Bye.